Welcome back. We mostly talk about the Godot engine on this channel, but here's a bit of news from outside the Godot sphere that was too good not to share. There is a game engine called Buildbox. It advertises itself as a free, easy to use 3D and 2D video game engine, all without the need to touch code. Now, that sounds great, but they've recently come under a lot of heat for their what I'm going to call funny business practices. Take a look at their pricing plans. If you purchase the Pro tier, if you make more than $2,500, you agree to give 10% of your game's revenue to them. At the Plus tier, if you make more than $50, you agree to give them 30% of your revenue. The Free tier just says Default. So right off the bat, that should raise some eyebrows. Why wouldn't they just list the numbers right there in the chart? So if you hover this info icon, it says you can find more information in the link below. So you scroll down and there's an FAQ here. I expanded each one of these questions until this one. Are games I make with Buildbox royalty free? And here there's an ever so tiny hyperlink. This is the secret page that contains the secret information we are searching for. And now for the punchline. If your game makes more than $5 USD, you must give 70% of your game's revenue to them. 70%. Imagine spending months, or maybe even a few years, making a game, and in the end, you barely receive any money it made. Some of you may remember that last December, Camille was hired to rewrite the Godot physics engine. The Godot developers decided that the bullet engine was no longer the best fit for Godot, and that Godot 4.0 would, by default, use an in-house solution called Godot Physics. Here is some of Camille's progress on that front. One of the first orders of business was to build a test framework. It is easy to fix one problem and accidentally break something else in the process. These testing frameworks ensure that no regressions in functionality are introduced. There is also now 2D and 3D physics specific bug tracking pages. All physics bugs can be viewed from these central locations. It's interesting to read the edge cases that Camille needed to solve, cylinder collision shapes being one of them. Height maps are now supported as well. This gets quite technical, so if you are interested, I will link the full article in the description. Soft body support was also implemented. This can be used for cloth simulation, deformable objects, and more. And one optimization I'm particularly excited for is multi-threading. The new physics engine will be able to solve things like narrow phase and impulse solving in parallel, which can make the physics simulation two or three times faster. Camille has stated that he will spend some time finalizing the API changes for physics and then move on to bug fixes. When Godot physics is considered production ready, they will look into adding new features and further optimizations. Speaking of physics, a new proposal has been published to Godot's GitHub to add a physics step interpolation. If your monitor uses a high refresh rate, you may have noticed jitter in the physics simulation in Godot. That's because Godot's physics runs at a fixed rate, which is lower than your frame rate. Physics interpolation can help with this problem. Some other cases where this can be helpful is in multiplayer games using a dedicated server, where the goal is to use less CPU and less bandwidth in order to support a higher maximum number of players. Less CPU usage can also be beneficial for lower end hardware hardware, such as for mobile games, but interpolation is required to give the appearance of a smooth physics simulation. The proposal follows Godot's philosophy of having things just work, without getting in the way of the developer. The proposal states that by default, rigid bodies will be interpolated, and kinematic bodies using the move and slide function will be interpolated as well. For everything else, you'll have to manually turn on interpolation. By the way, if you haven't already, go download Godot version 3.3.2. This is considered a maintenance release and has a ton of bug fixes. The jam portion of the Go Godot jam has started. You have less than a week to make a game using the Godot engine. The jam's theme is growth. Submissions close on June 1st. In other news, Godot now supports files over 2.1 gigabytes in size. It's not common for asset files to exceed that size, but Godot does pack all resources into a single PCK archive, so it is possible. A small visual update, pressed checkboxes in the Godot editor now have a more prominent appearance. This better matches how checkboxes look in other applications such as web browsers. And now is the part of the show where we talk about some cool projects made with the Godot engine. Here's a cool add-on that allows you to work with individual mesh instances that then automatically get converted to multi-meshes at runtime. This is great for performance. 
Lorian is an infinite canvas drawing slash note taking app that is focused on performance, small save files, and simplicity. Dome Romantic. Dig your way through to the core of the planet. Mine minerals, bring them back to your dome and install upgrades just in time to defend from hostile life forms. Bird Cafe is a coffee making visual novel about a cute bird helping adventurers on their quests. Curse of the Hero is an action-packed, emotional storytelling game. Experience a tale of a hero who society turned its back on and made a villain. Take flight with a wingsuit into the depths of the fantastic caves and other rock formations in Soaring Under. That's all I have for you this week. Like the video? Leave a comment for the algorithm? Thanks for watching.